Daniel, thank you very much for um, taking time for this conversation uh, and uh, congrats for this new exhibition we just opened here at the gallery. Um, the exhibition is called Daniel Blaufuchs. The days are numbered January. Um, the exhibition focuses on one month from your uh, diary. Uh, Non-diary. Imprecise diary, non-diary. It's the second time we show it at the gallery because last year, uh, right at the same uh, moment of the year, we showed at the gallery, but in the other gallery, um, an exhibition called Daniel Blaufuchs, The Nays Are Numbered May, and it was the month of May 2021. Uh, the month we focus on this exhibition is the month of January 2019, um, but for this exhibition, you you changed a little bit the way we present them, meaning you added three works apart from the diary and the month of the diary. And the three works are here to put in perspective some questions from the work, uh, questions about um, time, uh, space, memory, I mean, key issues in your work. Uh, and I should just mention, even though on the camera you can't see them, but on the website, uh, everything is photographed, reproduced, and you have images. There are three works. The three works are um, a triptych called Perpetual Calendar, and it's three photographs of words saying yesterday, today, tomorrow, and you can see uh, today just behind you. Um, there is a diptych called the 15 minutes. It's you know, two photographs of one clock showing six o'clock and the other one is 6.15. And the last one is, uh, is a new work. It's, um, it's a multiple after Man Ray and it's called Les Jours or The Days and it's a metronome uh, ticking in the exhibition. We didn't put it on for the conversation because it would be a nightmare to have it uh, in the sound, but it's, um, it's a metronome and if you think of Man Ray, the photograph of the eye has been replaced by uh, a mirror. Um, so it's the second time we show the, the diary, but it's the first time we actually record a conversation about the work. Um, just tell me how, you, how, how it started. I know the idea of the diary is a very long uh, question in your work, but when or how did you start making your own diary or maybe non-diary? Well, I think the, the idea of the diary derived from the exhibition we worked together at, uh, at the Musée de la Croix, the mm -hmm. Atelier de la Croix here in Paris, mm -hmm. where there were already, uh, the biggest part of the exhibition were single pages with instant images and some writing mm -hmm. uh, underneath or above it. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, which was around March, April uh, 2018, it evolved to this idea of doing at least a page a day. Mm -hmm. And I've been continuing to do that, um, although sometimes, especially when I travel, there is more than one page a day, actually, mm -hmm. so I, I kind of derive from that idea, although we could choose just one, the most important for, for that day, because also the, it is a non-diary in the sense that it goes from the personal to the to world events, to the impersonal, uh, you cannot, you cannot understand much from my, of my life from mm -hmm. seeing the diary, although mm -hmm. at some point you can understand more than at others, mm -hmm. but you can often understand, I mean, it would take some research and I don't think anyone would care to do it, but anyhow, it's there. Um, you would find or you could guess what am I reading, mm -hmm. um, what film or what shows I did see. Mm. or what are my concerns at the moment. So there are some photography concerns, but there are also some uh, political concerns mm. in terms mm. of world uh, events. Mm. And not only, also people that meant or still mean something to me mm. who died, and this can be, uh, let's call it celebrities, uh, writers or actors or artists. filmmakers or artists, mm. but also people I've, I've known uh, personally that obviously their disappearance affects my my life, mm -hmm. so it's a way to also to to stick to life by doing it. Mm -hmm. It's a so it's a diary because it's daily, mm -hmm. but it's a non-diary or a non-journal in the sense 
that it, it's not intimate. No? Mm -hmm. we, we have we kind of inherited this idea of the diary or something of something like when I was when I was little. Um, the, one of the presents you could give uh, to a child would be like a notebook with a lock and a little key. Mm. So the child, I mean the child, uh, mm. will be at some age where obviously she or he could already write, mm. but will have the feeling that everything he or she is writing in a diary is a complete secret, secret. because you know there is a, a tiny key that you need to open it. So this idea of the diary as a um, as a secret, I think it uh, it accompanies me. And usually diaries, uh, although there are other kinds, of, but usually diaries are published um, after after death mm. of of people. Often even with the uh, with erased parts, or often uh, with only the um, the capital letter of a name. Mm. And we can find that there are lots of examples in diaries of uh, of writers or politicians. But, uh, but it's like a post normally the, the publication of the diary is like a post mortem work. Well, the, one of the works in the exhibition that are facing the diary is um, uh, this triptych, uh, Yesterday, Today, Tomorrow, and they come originally, even though you translated them into English, but they come from a work you did. It's not about or on, it's. Um, it's loosely based. Loosely based. On, on Pavese's diary. On Pavese's diary. Yeah. which are kind of tragic, I mean, because he ends up the diary saying, uh, in, I don't know the exact words now, but basically it's enough uh, writing, mm. let's get into action, and then he commits suicide mm. the next day, and that's how the diary breaks, obviously. Uh, but they're, they're, they're very intense, because, uh, well, Pavez had a, he was in love with a, with a married woman who didn't respond, mm. he was sent... Uh, away to a small uh, town to teach, away from his, for political reasons, from his native um, Turino, Torino. So it's, it's kind of a, that's a diary, because mm. he really confines mm. Mm. in the diary. There is one day that I think it's, it's unbelievable, because he writes, uh, I think it's, it's the 25th of April of some year, 1943, something like that, where he just writes, today, nothing. Mm. And I really think, you know, uh, that says it all, but a day is never nothing. Even if you stay in bed, a day is something. Even if you sleep the whole day, mm. a day is really still something. So this today, nothing is a bit like my diaries. In fact, although I don't write, you know, you're not going to find I met this person on this day or I felt lost. Today. Sometimes you feel that. Yes. So I let, I let a little bit the door open, but the door is never totally open. Mm. So you might. Like in one of the diaries here, mm. in one of the pages here, under one of the images, this is January, right? Like mm -hmm. you said, it says the saddest day in the year. Yeah. And someone came up to me and said, why was this the saddest day of the year? What happened? And actually, nothing happened, or maybe something happened, which I don't remember, but yeah. I, it's the saddest day of the year because actually it's considered officially the saddest day of the year because we're in January, and people are already tired of winter, uh -huh. but summer is still far away, or mm -hmm. even spring. So it's considered a day where more people get depressed. Mm -hmm. So this is a condition that this has nothing to do with my personal life. Um, no, but but when you see it in the sorry, when you see it in, on on the wall in the diary, you think, oh, say something happened to him on this day, because you don't think how can he decide the saddest day of the year and we're still in January. More sad days will come. This is a uh, well. <clears throat> That's a, just a, sounds like an anecdote, but of course the title of the metronome that is in the, in the exhibition is so it's in French, but les jours for the days and uh, facing the days are numbered, which is the title of the of the diary. It feels when it's ticking, when you visit the exhibition and, and the, the metronome is ticking, it's the time passing mm. and as if the metronome was counting the days or each each bang could be that second, but each man can also be a calendar page, mm. Uh, mm. in a real calendar or a, a diary page in my, mm. in my work. Mm. So every time a day is done, it's gone. I'm not going to get it back. Mm. I mean, it's not only me, obviously, every human being alive, every living animal, every living plant. We, yeah. It is, um, when you say you don't remember, maybe we don't remember that day. 
it's a good experience we had at the gallery because last year we showed in June the diary from the month of May, so just a few days before. Um, and because you always mention the, the connection between photography and memory, public memory, private memory. Um, I remember in that other exhibition, the first day of May, uh, it was a composition with a photograph and it said May Day. And there was something about India. Mm. And now we are in June 2022. It's only just over a year and you read those words you don't know what it refers to. Yeah. But when we showed it, people knew that you were talking that day about the, the rate of uh, COVID cases, mm. the number, the, the model, mm. number of COVID cases exploding in India. We had just read it in the press. And you just need a few months to go through your life and you realize you forget all those uh, yeah. events. Yeah. No, and even in my private life, from this January 2019, uh, and I'm not going to go into that here, but everything changed from January 2019 yeah. Yeah. to today. Mm. You know, everything changed in my life, in my personal life. So, and, and there's going to be a point in the diary that you can sense that it changed, mm. I'm sure, if you look at the pages. But, uh, and the diary starts, and it relates to the attempting exhaustion series, which is the kitchen yes. window. The diary starts as a kind of... The, the work attempting exhaustion starts as a, a decision of confinement that I made in 2009 or something like that. But then the diary tra traverses, uh, crosses the, the, conf the COVID confinements yes. where we were all confined. So it suddenly it becomes completely like a, another, another truth, another, mm. you know, I was stuck, like we all were stuck. But I was stuck also in, inside my diary because for a photographer, not to be able to go out and photograph is already a, a kind of a counter sense. Yeah. In, in a photographer's mind, you have to go out like a hunter and hunt for images, mm. which is something I don't do, right? Mm. I changed that uh, years ago. But, but in the confinement, you really felt that. You know? Because the, the work on the, that you keep doing uh, even now, attempting exhaustion, so which is I should explain quickly, it's, it's, uh, it refers, the title refers to a, a text by Georges Ferrec, um, an attempt at uh, exhausting a place in Paris. Um, and you've been photographing since 2009, that same window, almost at a daily pace. So mm. there was already something of a diary yeah. in that work, yeah. even though you never, you probably never framed it as a diary. You never yes. really considered it as a diary. Yeah. It was even more loose than your diary is now, but there was already something of a diary. But even in the, in the book, uh, The Attempting Exhaustion, um, there is the sense of the diary already, yes. already because you're passing, although yes. there is no date, there is no, yes. almost no writing, there's like some writing, but very, very little, but there is already this sense, and also of, of being stuck, uh, which can be voluntary, so when I say being stuck, is not necessarily negative. I mean, even the confinement, which was negative, a lot of us were able to turn into something positive. So I'm not, I'm not even complaining. I'm privileged, obviously. But, um, but as we see January, I'm one day out of my house, basically. Yeah. And coming back the next day, out in the center of the region. Obviously, I went out in Lisbon on the streets, but mm -hmm. one day where I could not photograph the window because I was not in Lisbon. You were in Porto. You know, I was in Porto. And, and this is because obviously it's winter and so forth. But then with the COVID, I also started traveling less and less. Mm. So some months I'm more boring than others, obviously. During mm. the, um, the official lockdown for everybody, uh, you did these um, works that many people saw you, you were posting every day. Well, first I should say, because Instagram become a thing for many, you know, in the art world, etc. But you've been using Instagram almost from the beginning with your window mm. saying Instagram is basically a kind of a diary. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were justifying the use of Instagram mm. Yeah. Mm. because of the way it was uh, structured as a platform. Yes. And from the beginning of my beginning at Instagram, and I still keep it because I think it's, there is an overflow of images, 
uh, I have a rule, which is I only post once every two days. That's my rule. Mm. So it's very rare. I only post maybe extra if there's an exhibition I want to advertise or something. Mm. But I only post every two days because I really think you need to keep it low. So I'm, I'm kind of you know, yeah. fighting myself. For no, d during the yeah. lockdown, it's just an anecdote, but what you were posting were those um, uh, weather reports. Yeah. Uh, uh, and many people could watch your weather reports every day about the weather um, that you had where you were staying, I mean, in lockdown, but sometimes you would also make people believe that you were traveling somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to that maybe um, the need to hunt for uh, you know photography and sometimes going outside and sometimes it was the weather in my in my mind as yeah. well yeah like when I talk about uh, it's kind of I don't know I don't remember it's kind of Tarkovskian weather or mm. so that's the weather in my mind it doesn't mean it's really like mm. like like that because weather I mean this relates a bit to to Ronnie Horn maybe weather makes us you know we're different people yeah. with with heat like we have in the past days. Mm or in January after, yeah. after a, a cold winter. Mm. You know, we're completely different, or at least I feel a completely different mm. person. Mm. Well, th there's one thing um, I think beautiful, really, you say about your attempting exhaustion, about the window, and, and it basically um, how you say, infuses, if you can say that, in, 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 your, in your diary or your imprecise or non-diary, Especially now because the exhibition is that month of January in in, uh, in 2019, and it's mostly about the window, um, which is not the case for all months in your in your diary. Um, but you say, and you think of Terek, uh, you say um, people always photograph when there's something happening, when there's an event. So maybe it's a public event, could be like a, yeah, a, a celebration like a parade, of accidents. A parade. Or, or, or Christmas, which is public and private. and private, and that's when you like your our most childhood pictures are from yes. specific things, either Birthday. holidays, yeah. you know, even the super red, the eight millimeter super red takes that over. Mm. You know, it's to show the family, show the status because you always see the car of the family, but also see the happiness mm. of the family. You don't, there there are no unhappy people in family photos. That's the thing, mm. you only get photographed when you're in a happy event. Mm. You know, so you, you don't see the, the depressed uncle yeah. or the pedophile uncle mm. or the guy who just came out of prison mm. because we're all smiling. In, I mean, when I'm talking about traditional family photographs, analog still, um, vintage, how do you call it now? Uh, there's a name for that. But anyhow, the vernacular. vernacular. Yeah. Um, so everybody's happy, mm. you know, in those, in those, in those pictures. And, and there's always someone missing, if we look at the, from the 50s to, or even before, from the 40s for people who really could afford it, until the 70s, 80s, there is always someone missing who is the father who has the camera. Because the woman will not take the camera, mm -hmm. and maybe a child, when he grow a little bit, the father will give him the camera for a few minutes, mm -hmm. but usually there's always the father missing. So there are lots of interesting uh, layers even even there so my diary again is the is the opposite of that because there is n i mean i have no portraits in my diary which yeah. is people that i photograph but i don't consider them portraits because i think that's an offense to people who are making portraits even i mean i was this morning seeing the august thunder mm -hmm. portraits but even more recent ones or or Picasso's portrait of Getrude Stein, where she said mm. 90, 90 times, how can I call my snapshot photo a poetry? So it's a non-poetry, poetry, mm. but these people are part of my life, so I integrate them in, in, in the diary. They made that day, mm. even if I was 10 minutes or mm. half an hour or two hours. Obviously, I didn't spend the whole day with this person, or sometimes I do, but mostly not. But they kind of integrate the diary like they would be a landscape. Which is, I mean, the second part of what you say is that we always photograph, or people always photograph when something happens, and we never photograph when nothing happens. Which is maybe the, the one um, um, 
challenge of attempting exhaustion mm -hmm. of the entire mm -hmm. project, and, 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 you, and you clearly see it in the diary too, when you say uh, it's a non-portrait of people coming. It's a non-portrait because it's photographs of almost like a non-event. Mm. You don't consider them as, a, as, as the important event that needs to be photographed. I think the master of nothingness in photography is William Eggleston, basically, because uh, you can't really see anything. Uh, uh, Why did he photograph? Is it the, you know, when, when, I, and when I was in school, Cartier-Bresson was the master. Mm. And now if you ask a student, William Eggleston will at some point, and Cartier-Bresson is completely forgotten by the student. Mm. Not that he's... Is not uh, it should not be praised, but so but but just to say that that's the change. Cartier-Bresson is like the inf the decisive moment, the moment you catch a man jumping over yes. a, a water a yeah. pool or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and 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 so you you go from this photography where something special happens to to William Eggleston where he takes one pic actually. Uh, Eggleston only takes one picture. He says the first picture is good. I don't need to take a second. But always, I only take one. But if you look at the images, you ask, why did he take? Anyone could take this picture, but not really, obviously. But he's like, people go and see Picasso and say, my child could paint this. No, that's why Eggleston is a genius. But it's really, there's nothing there. Yeah. Why you be photographing? You know. So although my work is completely different, but I'm very interested in this idea. Because people love pictures and, and, and Instagram lists from that. People love pictures with other people. Mm. That's the thing. If you have other people in the picture, mm. if they're naked, even better. Mm. But if, if you have other people in the picture, you attract. I've tested it with, with the teenagers. Mm. It, it's very hard to look at a picture without someone and, and be attentive. Mm. It's interesting. You know, because in, 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 a, in a photograph of someone, there's a gaze mm. watching you back, there's something happening again. In a landscape, there's hardly anything happens. In a city picture, there's always something happening. Mm. You know, so I'm, 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 I'm interested in that. But, but I was, I was, with the diary, I'm also trying to, to, you know, to lower that to the minimum, because also we should say that, that the window, and that is important for both projects, it's a, it's a, a window with stained glass, yes. so you don't even know you what's you going don't, you on. Don't see outside. Yeah. yeah, so it's like what is the light? The there is a light. Yeah. You can feel if it's the weather is better or not. Mm -hmm. You have no sense of what time uh, I'm taking the picture, mostly unless the sun is coming in, mm -hmm. and you know that the sun is starting to go to go down. But but the fact that it's stained closes the space in and doesn't open to the outside. Mm -hmm. And here and there. The window is open, but it's very rare, rare enough to make to keep you curious of what is on, 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 on the other side. So that's the mystery also in photography. Nothing is happening, but everything could be happening at that, at that time. What is happening in that? Because that's the thing also in photography. We go and see a photograph and we never think, this is really something amazing, we never think on the, about the borders of the photograph, so what is next? Yes what was not photographed, and also we never think of the instant before or the instant after the, 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 the shot was made. We so really contain the, the auction. Or yeah. the, yes. So in, in, the in-between moments, yes. So in, in photography, we really contain in what the photo, photographer chose to show us. So if I show you nothing, mm. people kind of have to hang to the little bits I'm giving if they want to see the photograph mm. and, 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 and get some clues. So on Instagram, it's funny because people write sometimes interesting things, sometimes most absurd things, sometimes like, oh, I have the same plant, something like that. So yeah. they're looking like for clues. The day before, yesterday I put some white gloves, so I got like five comments, which I wasn't expecting, five or six. So people react to these white gloves, yeah. saying something is going to happen. Because the, the white, I like the white gloves, because I already use them, because in, in other things, the white gloves is like, not only is for hanging an exhibition, or for doing something precious on that table, but also to murder someone, you know. It's, so it's it only is, uh, you have a photograph of white gloves in Terezin. Yeah, because it's. Yes. I was interesting because it's an archive. You were the gloves were there to protect the documents, mm -hmm. but the archive is about the biggest murder yeah. in, in in history. Mm -hmm. So this, you know, so so it's funny. Sometimes I get these reactions. I'm not even 
expecting, which is nice. That's the nice thing about Instagram is you, you trigger something in, 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 in people. That's why the, in the exhibition we have, I mean, just above you, behind, uh, above me, behind um, 15 minutes, because in a way there are many, many things we can say about this work, but within the context of the exhibition, which almost becomes sort of like an installation, the way you conceived it, mm. uh, it's 15 minutes, which could be maybe the time you need to make a good follower. Maybe it's no, the time in between followers. Or which would be exaggerating, but the life of a photograph before being forgotten. Yeah, you know, it's, a before being of, it's, a, it's a 15 minutes of fame Span, of a photograph. Yeah, of, yes. the, of the photograph yeah. itself. Yeah. You know, because then afterwards you have forgotten, you know. Mm. Mm. And unless you see it again uh, in, a, you know, in a book. That's also the nice thing about Instagram. If then you show the same image somewhere else a year later, yeah. people react to it because they don't remember they have seen it. But their brain knows they have seen it, you know. And that, that I like that, and that's the thing with the with the, with the window is the repetition makes that not even I <coughs> can. When, and I'm talking about this, the square pictures of Instagram, not the other ones that yes. have different sizes. Not even I can remember one single photograph. It's like all the photographs that I took are mingled mm. in one photograph that nobody is going to remember because that if. You know, if I say, do you remember that photograph of the table, we'll have a hard time pinpointing, you know, of course, the one with the gloves, you remember the one, but if we're speaking in, 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 in six months, you will not remember the gloves, mm. you know, mm. uh, you know that. Mm. so, and, and in a lot of, and the gloves is special because there is something that you can see. In a lot of the images, there is nothing. It's just the light that changes. That you can refer yeah. to a bit more, like, specifically. Yes, yes. and a lot of the images, there is nothing. So it's like you have... You know, it's like a, a whole set of photographs mm. that are exactly the same photograph. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, like, it's like... Well, you know, every time... Um, I mean, there were a few occasions where we were able to show um, very large prints of a photograph from the window because you made very, very few that can be enlarged about almost two meters high. You made... I think you made like six or seven in total. Um, since 2009, mm. but every time we show them, we have so many visitors. So it could be in an exhibition, it could be on a fair, it could be. We have so many people coming and say, I know this window. I know this window. I know it's Daniel Blaufuchs. Fuchs. And you say, Yes, you know the window. You don't know this photograph. You have, you've never mm. seen this mm. specific, that specific mm. photograph. But everybody knows the window, and it, and it's it's a funny reaction, and that that says a lot about our um, uh, how do you say our relationship with photography, the the way the memory, you know, the the one one element um, sticks into your mind. Yeah, because if you if you imagine you're gonna talk about me and say, oh, he's the photographer of the window, hmm. but he's but you know what photograph of the window? Yes. because there's so many, Thousands. you know, and also I use the different. Uh, different cameras, mm. you know, different sizes, different uh, slide, uh, analog, uh, digital and so forth. And just by using a different camera, the window is something different. Mm. So the medium changes the subject, mm. you know, which is also important to remember in, in, in photography. Mm. Uh, like, it's the same when we see the pictures from the, from the American dream in the 50s, they lo everything looks bright mm. in, in the States in the, in the 50s. And it's not, the, uh, the states haven't changed, the Kodachrome disappeared, you know. Mm. So, so the, the, the time and the epoch and this idea of the American dream is connected to the medium, to the technology of the medium. So if yes. I show the window on a black and white uh, Polaroid that is fading in a way, mm. the, 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 the impact or the non-impact compared to a big, to a big and li to a large uh, print, it's, it's completely different, although it's exactly yeah the same photograph yeah. or the same uh, the same meaning so so that raises also a question that I feel because it raises also a question about Instagram and seeing work on um, on, a, on, a, on an iPhone or on an iPad because there's no size to them mm. you know a, pho a photograph 
That's why I always say a, a, a photograph in a book is not a photograph, it's a reproduction of a photograph. Mm -hmm. We know that with painting, but our brain doesn't know that with photographs. The, we there think are many illusions with photographs. Yeah, we think we're seeing the original, yeah. but we're not seeing the right sides, yeah. definitely. And we're probably going to see a, a, a bad printing because mm. the book cannot represent mm. as a, a silver crown or mm. whatever. Mm. So, so in that sense, photography also makes this possibility of uh, playing with it, mm. playing around with it, mm. you know, playing with the, with, the, with the image on the screen, playing with the image in print, print playing with the, with the instant print, mm. playing with an instant print that is disappearing because it's made by a factory which doesn't, hasn't yet mm. achieved uh, long-lasting uh, films or, you know, the other ones by, uh, by, by Fuji, which mm. obviously have a much, uh, much longer li lifespan. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I think that, that and, and it speaks also of an archive yeah. in the end, you know, what's gonna, what is, what is the goal? Because that's the interesting thing also, because you were saying about yesterday, today and tomorrow. What is the goal? The goal is not to have um, 50 boxes of diary at my home. The goal is to do the diary today yes. and then leave it, put it in a box. But it doesn't really interest me afterwards. Mm. In that sense, it's done. Mm. So the goal is, is, is about today. Well, you know? of course, I mean, you could, you could make um, comparisons with many other important uh, diaristic works. Uh, well, the exhibition at Musée de la Croix you mentioned was you, uh, Eugène de la Croix and Onkawala. So, of course, you could uh, imagine the relationships <coughs> and the, the... On the shoulder of giants. The, the shoulder <laughs> of giants. Uh, there's also... And that's interesting. Uh, you could say Romano Valca. Mm. Um, but there's one thing, the title of your diary or non-diary is called The Days Are Numbered. So every day, once you've made uh, your page on an A4 paper, you number it, you stamp the number. And um, maybe that's the reverse or the real opposite of Opalka in one sense, mm. meaning the numbers, they grow. And what I think is beautiful, in, even in the title, but it's the whole intention, and it goes back to the fact that you, 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 your interest is in today, there's no end to it. Well, there is an end. It's a count, but it's but a we don't know when. countdown. Yeah. And also I stamp, this might sound a bit weird, but I, also, I, I think I mostly stamp so that I cannot today change yesterday. Because once it's stamped, mm. it's finished. Yeah. I cannot rewrite, I cannot, you know, yes. I have the page, it's stamped, yeah. I'm not gonna, you know. Mm. So it's like, when I put the stamp, this is it, mm. it's done. Mm. When I put it in a plastic mm. uh, glove, or what you call it, a sleeve, plastic sleeve, sleeve and into the box. Mm. So that's also, so that tom tomorrow I cannot, nah, that wasn't so good, the, yesterday that I did, let's do it again. Mm. You know, I never do that. Mm. So it's also a system of, of controlling myself. And this, maybe we should go back to, because in, in, in 1993, which is a long time ago, I, did, I was at the Royal College on an exchange program in London, and I did a book called London Diaries, yes. which, uh, where I wrote, uh, and, and good, uh, that at that time there were still real Polaroids, and I had that, that thing that once, because what, what interested me at that time, fascinated, in, in, and and made me take the Polaroid as a, as a, as a, as a medium, uh, is exactly that by being instant, and this is before digital, mm. although still there are big differences with digital, um, you have a, a, a relation with the image, with the photograph, that is not, is this a good image? Mm. Do I want to show this? No, it's the image of that moment, whatever, and you need it for that text. And the fact that you have um, images makes you have to write more in an idea of the design. Mm. So you kind of go with the text behind it, mm. right? Well, there was so one page in the London Diaries where you, I think you wrote text on the page, then you photographed the text and you, and you, you put the photograph maybe, of the maybe. text over the text. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah, but then the thing is, if I write more, 
I also going to need some images because it's not a writing, yes. a written diary. Mm -hmm. It's an image and and text diary. Mm -hmm. So it made me, it made me, it made me work. So basically, when I started this diary, I I went back to where I more or less began in '94. So it's not that I invented it. You did it, no. You did also the diary in Saint Petersburg. I do, and that was a commission. But yeah. yes, but that was '98, uh, so four yeah. years. And I did one in Mostar actually mm -hmm. during the war, which is not is badly printed and so forth. Was not, I was never very happy with it. And was done like in three or four very stressing days in Mostar. Stressing because they were still, mm -hmm. you know, I got mm -hmm. a machine gun in my back and blah blah blah. But um, but 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 this, and also the Polaroid makes you feel uh, that it is precious, yes. which is something that in this non-diary is important because. It's not the Polaroid that is precious, it's the day that is precious. Yes. You know, even if it's gone, it's still precious. Mm. You know? mm. and, and, and it keeps you, again, like the metronome, like the metronome. it keeps you track. Mm. It keeps you track of your, of your life, because more or less we all throw our lives away, uh, mm. some better than others, but we throw it away because there is no other way even to live, mm. you know? either by working every day or either by drinking in bars every day. I mean, And we try to measure both things and have, you know, like a healthy life between. But one way or the other, we're wasting it because we can't hold it, mm. you know. So... And that's why you put uh, today in the exhibition also with the diary. Because, yeah, also because the today is the most important, because it's the moment we're leaving mm. and we don't know about tomorrow. We don't, we don't, know, don't have any idea what's going to happen tomorrow. And also because today is the day you are seeing the work. Yes. So it's also about the three moments, and you write that in the introduction, uh, the three moments of a, a painting or of a photograph. It's the moment I make it, in this case, mm -hmm. the moment someone sees it, so that today changes. Mm -hmm. And by changing, there's this third moment, which is the moment that is in between. Yes. Meaning, and I'm not going to talk here about my work because I thought that it's going to happen, But if we go into the Louvre and we see a painting from 1640, the moment we see it is today, but also the, the way we look at that painting is completing, the, and it's the same painting, right? We could go to see, the, let's say, the Mona Lisa. The way we see the Mona Lisa today mm. is not the same way that someone, let's say, 100 years ago saw so it, because his surroundings are completely different. And he was already detached, like, I don't know, 300 years from Leonardo, 400 maybe, yeah. right? So yeah. we are even more detached, and, and that accumulation of time is also accumulation of information and just reality change. So the painting carries that time, mm. you know, and mm. someone, if the Louvre is still there in 400 years, the today of that someone uh, that will see the Mona Lisa in 400 years, it's, it's, another, it's, it's another. So it's apprehension of the painting. Mm. It's mm. completely different. Mm. So that moment between making and seeing is all always changing, especially mm -hmm. with uh, lasting artworks. Mm -hmm. Which so I rather talk about uh, paintings because in that sense, and and, and by changing and, and getting larger and larger and larger, it changes. It can change the whole meaning of the painting. Yes. Like for example, if you would go and and see the painting in in the 16. 1700s, you will know the meaning of the painting. Yes. Today, we go into, a, into a, an art museum and we don't know anything. Yeah. We don't know the Bible stories that are depicted there. We don't know the, the little Mythology. things that people, you know, mm. why is there a, a shell or why is there a fish or why is uh, Jesus doing this? Mm. We don't know anything unless we study it, which is important. for a few. <laughs> no, it's important, but, yes. to, but, to, but to have that knowledge, You need to study. Uh, you need to study. So, so, so you, you probably are an art historian mm. or someone with you know. You need time for that. You cannot be a, a bank uh, mm. or an accountant. Mm. While in 1600, someone would go to see the painting. It didn't matter. You would, you would know because it was common knowledge. Probably yes. Probably yeah. probably. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. But yeah. No, because you. It's like the um, the medicine from our grandmothers. Uh, that you could cure your headache not with an aspirin but with some plant. Mm, mm. We lost that completely. Mm. You know, so that, that those meanings where you, you would know the Bible mm. in 1600, even if you were an accountant, mm. you would know the Bible because you were religious. Mm. Now we are secular, so we, 
I mean, so we don't know it. Mm. I mean, we know the, the big things of the time, no? but we don't, we know, don't know the details. Uh, you don't know the details. Yeah. No. And painting is, I feel, and I don't know anything, really. <laughs> no, I, I stand in front uh, of a painting and I, I can appreciate the beauty of the painting, but I cannot understand most paintings because I don't have, I, you know, I have to read, uh, and that's just a very brief uh, mm. thing. So I admire the painting for the quality of the painting, mm. but not for the, all the stories that are yes. in, 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 inside. The other day I was reading about the painting, I don't know by whom now, but it was the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. and she wears, I don't know now the, the author, but she wears um, an earring, mm -hmm. okay? And, 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 and this is very rare and uncommon. And the reason that is supposed that she's wearing an earring is because in, this is an Italian painting, in Italy, Jewish women were made to wear, they had to wear earrings when they left the house in, at some point. Um, so it is strange, but what the painter is saying, yes. don't forget that Virgin Mary was Jewish. Yes. You know? Yes. So I would look at the painting and see why is she wearing an earring? Was she vain? Uh, mm. I mean, I would maybe ask, hmm, that is strange. Coming from but, the 21st century. Yes, yes but I would not know the, the reason at all. So mm. it's, you know, mm. it's, and it's quite fascinating because it's like a secret, a secret message uh, by the painter. Well, we'll see how it um, evolves, but I wonder, you know, if in 20 years, I think your diary or non-diary is really the work of a life, so... I should have started this <laughs> years earlier. <laughs> no, but there's a big chance that in 20 years you're still, you're still doing it. But I will... Um, I wonder how people will uh, look at uh, the first uh, years and the first... and see if just the lifespan of, you know, um, just a few decades, if uh, that already creates something, probably, probably, probably a distance mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, there are links you can make from the diary, and, and, and basically I feel it's a virtual, a non-virtual Instagram. Yeah, this know, is what you in, said in, the other day. In yes. many ways, um, which is something you, you, can, you can hold. Mm. I mean, it makes a whole difference mm. if you hold it or if you see it in the fr on, the, on the frames and you see how it's glued, and you feel the paper, and you feel the, mm. the wrinkles, or the collages, because there's some collages. And, 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 and again, it makes you, unlike if it would be on a real Instagram, or, mm. or on the internet, because I thought about putting it, mm. but unlike it would be on a screen, here you, I think, or at least I have that vanity, I think you are sucked in just by the materials, like I'm sucked in, when I go and see a uh, Cartesian exhibition just by the way he printed, because the time is there on, on, on the print. Mm. Obviously, I could see the same photographs in a, in a book, and I have, and I do, mm. uh, but it's not the same thing because just it's, it's the aura. I mean, I'm still trying to get the aura from Benjamin, I'm a bit late, I know, mm. but still. Um, but there is something uh, to it, yeah. which the paint, a painting never lost. You know, because there is the, the work. So you're not using something that's reproducible for the, for the diary? No, that doesn't matter. As long as you use it as... Um, as, as long as you can show, show it outside the screen. Yes. And in many ways, this is much more... If, I mean, I, as you know, I, I do the, the big prints as well, big, large prints. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't think you... There you have the relation with the image, yes. right? In the window project or in other projects, you have the, the relation with the image inside the photograph. Mm -hmm. Here you have the relation with the object, mm -hmm. with the whole page, with the writing. It's with the object that you have the, the relation as a, as a viewer, you know? Well, you know, I have a, it will be a surprise for, uh, in, for in a few months for the, everybody that uh, I'm, I'm working on a project where and, and you're part of it, where uh, we say that the photograph uh, is not an image and then we try to separate mm. and we will show basically photography without images, but yes. Mm. Yeah, left two for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.